In this video, what I'd like to do is talk about what are images. And this may be how you currently think about images that are displayed on a screen. Next, I'm gonna talk about how we need to alter or augment our original view of images to, un to have more information about the image. And this is what we will need when we're doing applications with image processing or computer vision. We need to know more information about the individual image. Then finally, I'm going to show you how to display and load images using Python, specifically with matplotlib. So let's talk about what images are. And if you've ever taken a picture with your cell phone camera or you've done a Google search, you've seen images displayed like I'm displaying them right now. And one of these images is the image of a moon crater. The other is a image of peppers. But you may or may not have recognized or seen or even noticed these numbers, some of the numbers that are associated with an image, the 256 by 256, the 512 by 512. These numbers represent pixels that the image are made out of. And specifically, one of the numbers is going to represent how many pixels make up the height of the image. The other is going to represent how many pixels make up the width of the image. I've said the word pixel a lot, so what is a pixel? Let's zoom in on one of these images, and when we zoom in far enough, we're going to get to a point where we see all these different squares. And when we get to this point, we're looking at the individual pixels of an image, and I've highlighted a couple of them. So a pixel is gonna be a square that has a single color. None of these pixel pixels are gonna have multiple shades of a color or multiple colors. It's just a single color. So some of them are dark grays, some of them are white, some of them are black, but it's always one color. Now when you zoom in this far and you look at these individual pixels, the image is not gonna be a good resolution. You're not really probably gonna be able to make out what the image is. But when you zoom back out, when you zoom far enough, the image is going to be uh, clear again. When we're using images for image processing or computer vision, it's typically better to think about images as matrices and the pixels will represent the rows and columns of a matrix rather than think of the pixels representing the, the height and the width. It's the same thing. It's just a different way of representing it. Now, sometimes I think about it as height and width. Sometimes I think about it as rows and columns. But why matrices are nice is we can add in this third dimension, which is the depth or the channels of an image. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But when we talk about rows and columns of a matrix, a matrix, the, the origin is typically going to be in the upper left-hand corner. So that's where 0, 0 is going to be. If I look at this gray image right here and for illustrative purposes let's pretend that each of the squares on this grid are an individual pixel they can't be because they have multiple colors but let's just pretend they're an individual pixel if i wanted to figure out what an individual pixel is let's say five down three across i would count five pixels down go three pixels across and then at my pixel it would give me back a value in a grayscale it's going to give me back a single value that single value is going to represent the intensity of the brightness of the image now typically the brightness will range from a 0 to a 255 where 0 is black 255 is white uh, it could be different depending on a lot of different factors but uh, if we're 0 to 255 all of these different pixels in the entire image are going to have numbers on them. They could be different numbers. If it's a single color, it could all be the same color, uh, all be the same value. Now, a grayscale image is always going to have, a true grayscale image is always going to have a single channel. So that 256 by 256 by 1. If we're looking at a color image, a color image is not a grayscale image. So a color image is going to have at least three channels. Now, the representation I'm using is RGB. So that is red, green, blue. Those are the three different channels or depth that I'm looking for on this image. Now, I, I threw some Python notation up here. So this image of one, two in the colon means I'm looking at the pixel of my first row, my second column, and I'm looking at all of the channels. 
And if I do that, I'm going to get a value of a 9, 4, and a 1. Now, I could look at these individually if I only wanted a single number. If I wanted to get something from the red channel, I would have to put a 0 instead of the colon, and I could get the 9. If I wanted the green channel, I'd have to put a 1 instead of the colon, and I could get a 4. And if I wanted the blue channel, I'd have to put a 2 instead of the colon, and I can get a 1. So I could get any of the individual channels. But what's really interesting is that when we look at the individual channels of an image, it's actually going to be grayscale. So this is the actual red channel, the actual green channel, and the actual blue channel. And I put the, the actual image below it. So when we start to look at this, we get some hints at what colors this, this is. So this pepper right here, it's red. I said 0 is black, 255 is white. So in the red channel, that's telling you how much red those pixels have. So these pepper, this pepper right here, it's mostly red. So we have a lot of red from the red channel, but we don't have much from the green channel or the blue channel. So if I have something that's 255, 0, 0, I'm going to have a color red. If I have something that's a pixel that's 0, uh, 255, and 0, that's going to be green. And if I have something that's 0, 0, and 255, that's going to be blue. Now it's possible we might... We have more colors, uh, so let's look at let's look at this pepper right here. And this pepper, it has a bit of a yellow tint, so I have a lot of red, or a decent amount of red, and I have a decent amount of green and not much blue. So when I have something like that, 255 and 255 is going to be yellow. So when I put all those colors together, that's telling me that that's going to look like yellow. Okay, so now I want to actually load an image and display an image with Python. Uh, so what I want to do, I'm going to be using matplotlib. So the first thing I want to do is make sure my dependency matplotlib is installed. So pip install matplotlib for my command terminal. Now my dependencies are already installed. The requirements are already satisfied. A good one, another one to install while you're at it is NumPy. We may or may not use it, uh, but it's good to have uh, NumPy installed too. So after those are installed, the next thing we need to do is we need to create a directory, so a folder that's going to have the two images that we want to display. In our case, this fingerprint, which is a grayscale, and this galaxy cluster, which is a colored image. And we also want to put our Python script in that same directory. Now everything's set up, let's uh, write our import statements. So from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. And that's all we need, I think. Uh, so I want to have one image and another image. So I want to create a subplot with my two images. So how I'm going to do that, I'm going to say some figure and axis is going to be equal to plt.subplots and one, two. Subplots. This is going to be the number of rows that I want and the columns that I want. So if I do plt.show right now, it's going to give me a blank subplot. So one of my images is going to be right here. The other is going to be right there. So let's uh, close my windows. Now let's show my images. So my first image, I'm going to say plt. Dot I am read, and this is why it was important to put it in the same directory. While it can handle a, a full directory, uh, because they're in the same directory, I can just use the name of the file to install it. So galaxy cluster.jpg. Now I'm on a subplot, so I need to do my axis of zero. Dot I am show is going to be I am one. Let's show this. So now, uh, make it a little bigger. Let's explore this a little bit. We have, we're showing an image. And if you look up here, it might be a little small, uh, but if you look up here, what you're going to see is all these X and Y values. So it uses an X, Y 
representation of an image to have different pixels. So let's let's zoom in on one of these clusters like right here. And this is uh 396, uh, 163 of the one I'm on. So one of these is 396, 163. So this one. And I get a value, an RGB value of 158, 81, 29. Now you notice it subdivides it into subpixels, but the only thing that matters is the full pixel. So let's get it to show us that value. And we got to this is where it gets tricky. This is X and Y. But when we do a matrix, it needs to be in a row and column. A row is going down, a column is going to the left. So let's first say, okay, I am 1, 396, 163. And we'll take all of our, so I'll call this pixels. And I'm going to print out pixels. Okay, 25, 25, 25. That's not what I'm looking for. This is because, and this is messes up a lot uh, of people. This was an X, Y coordinate. When we refer to our pixels this way, in a matrix form, we need to refer to it as a row and column. Now X is really my column, Y is really my row, so I need to actually switch these around. Now when I run and print this, I'm going to get 158, 81, 29, and that's what I should have gotten. I think it was over here. Uh, 396, 163, up one, right there. 158, 81, 29. So anyway, uh, there's a couple of other things we can do. If we don't want to show all those numbers on the side of our image, we can say, all right, let's set our axis to off. And if I want to actually put a title, and I'm going to just say this is Galaxy. Let's run this. I don't have these on my Galaxy image anymore. And I have a title that says Galaxy. It's great. Okay, let's do my next image. My next image is a grayscale image. So I'm going to say im2.plt.imread. And I'm going to do fingerprint.jpg. Let's do the same thing here, except instead of axis two, one, zero, it's going to be axis one. I'm going to I am show I am two. I'm going to say axis one dot axis off and axis AX one dot set title. And I'm going to set it as fingerprint. Oops, fingerprint. Okay, now when we do this, it's going to look a little odd because of how uh, how Matplotlib displays grayscale images. It defaults to this green color scheme. So when you see this green color scheme, it's not that big of a problem. It just means it's a grayscale image. Uh, so instead of I am show, uh, instead of just leaving it like this, we need to pass a secondary argument we have to say cmap is equal to gray. And when we say cmap is equal, equal to gray, we then actually get our gray color scheme. Now, I'm going to show a couple more things. Let's just say we give it an argument that doesn't exist. Right now, these are all the different color maps that we can choose to uh, display it as. So let's pick pink. For whatever reason, let's say we want to display this as pink. Now it has a different color map and I'm going to be able to display my grayscale image with a different type of color map. 
So it's not going to be grayscale. It's just going to map the intensity images to different colors. And the last thing I want to show you is let's look at the sizes of these images. So let's say size 1 is im1.shape. Let's say size 2 is im2.shape. Let's print out S1. Let's print out S2. Okay, so I'm printing the pixels first, then S1 and S2. So S1, right there, uh, this is S1. This is my color image. I have 1062 rows, 1041 columns, and three channels. That's my galaxy. For my grayscale, I have 234 rows, 250 columns, and by default, it doesn't show the one, but it really is a, a 234, 250 by one. It just doesn't show the one. So they are different amounts of depth, and that's why I'm able to change the color map. If I tried to change the color map on this right here, let's say cmap equals gray. Let's put this back to gray. It's not actually going to change when it pops up. It's not actually going to change. It's going to be in color. Because this has an RGB image, it has those three color channels, it's not actually going to change in color. So now you know how to load in an image. You know how to check some, some vital statistics of the image, the shape, uh, how to get pixel values, and how to display an image. And that's the beginning of working with images and image processing or computer vision.